I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this combination CCNA and Network Plus 2009 video practice exam on authentication protocols and network security. Obviously, that's a pretty broad topic, so I'm going to be bringing you several video practice exams on this topic, which is why I numbered this one number one. And if you haven't taken any of my video practice exams before, I'll quickly give you the format as you take a look at the URLs for my website's tutorial pages, where I've got over 300 videos, practice exams, and fully illustrated tutorials waiting for you. And if you're not already watching this on YouTube, or even if you are, head over there and subscribe to my Cisco and Network Plus 2009 certification channel. We've got over 100 certification videos for you to watch there now, and plenty more on the way. So again, we'll go, we'll go through these 10 questions questions one at a time naturally and some will be multiple choice some will not be I'm gonna go through them somewhat rapidly because we do have a 10 minute time limit on YouTube and then I want plenty of time to go back through the answers with you so feel free to pause the video if you need a few extra seconds with any of the questions and let's get started with that with question number one which of the following is true regarding PAP Between PAP and CHAP, which one of them uses a handshake similar to that used by TCP? Is it both, neither, just PAP, or just CHAP? We'll go to question three. Which port number is used by the secure version of HTTP? Next question, which of the following statements is true of Telnet? And as always, these are select all that apply. I know that's not your favorite. It never, it's not mine either, but it's a good way to learn. Which of the following statements is true of Telnet? Which of these is considered to be the strongest wireless security protocol? Go to the next question. Short answer. At what layer of the OSI model should your network security policy begin? Number seven, what Cisco router command helps to defend your router passwords against what is sometimes jokingly called the over-the-shoulder network attack, but is somewhat easy to crack? Number eight, you've written an access control list that contains three lines. The first line denies incoming telnet connections, the second line denies incoming TCP synchronization packets, and the third line denies incoming NTP connections. Once you apply that to an interface, that ACL inbound, what is the net result? Number nine, just quickly give a brief description of a DOS attack. Of course, we've got to know what that is before we can give the description. And number 10, what network security tool can be defined as an encrypted password protected file that contains a public key, a private key, and other information that helps to identify a given user? All right, so that's the end of the 10 questions. So now we'll go back through and give some answers and explanations. And with PAP, Unfortunately for PAP, neither the username nor the password are going to be encrypted. This is the password authentication protocol, and we really prefer to use CHAP or MSCHAP when we can, because PAP is not particularly secure. Speaking of the two, it's CHAP that uses a handshake similar to that used by TCP. It's the three-way handshake. The port number used by the secure version of HTTP is 443 where HTTP's port number is 80. And just a word in case, especially if you're just starting your studies, your networking studies, I know from experience having been there that sometimes you're learning all these port numbers, like do I really need to know these? Am I really going to apply these in the real world? You will, and they'll definitely come in handy in future studies as well. But with today's network security procedures, firewalls everywhere, that kind of thing, we've just got to know some of these port numbers. Which of the following is true of Telnet? B is definitely true. Passwords and data are sent in unencrypted format. C, it's used to connect from remote connections to Cisco routers and, of course, for other uses as well, but that's definitely one of them. Uh, it does not use UDP port 123, and if you don't know what port number Telnet uses, that's your homework assignment for this video, is to uh, find out what port it does use. 
Then also it does uh, not require password is false. Telnet's going to require one. Which of the following is the strongest wireless security protocol? It's WPA2. CSMACA does have something to do with wireless, uh, wireless networking, I should say, but it's not really a security protocol. You should definitely begin your network security policy at the physical layer of the OSI model. This gets overlooked quite often, but we've got to physically lock our devices down as securely as we can. And that includes locked doors, locked server cabinets if possible, but you've definitely got to start your procedures just by locking your devices up physically before you worry about locking them up logically. What Cisco Router Command helps to defend our passwords against this type of attack, this is the Service Password Encryption Command and it will encrypt the passwords in your configuration so if someone's looking over your shoulder they're not going to see what your telnet and your console passwords are but it is very easy to crack. Cisco themselves even warned you about that on their website saying it's good for very basic security uh, but it is pretty easy to crack that particular algorithm. If you write an ACL that has only deny statements when you apply it the net result is that everything is denied because remember you've got that implicit deny at the end of every Cisco access control list and even if you write three explicit deny statements or 20 of them you still have that implicit deny at the end so if you want to permit everything that you have not expressly denied you need to put a permit any statement at the bottom of your ACL give a brief description of a DOS attack that's denial of service and it, it can take several forms but basically the attacker is attempting to tie up your network or maybe a particular server with so many false requests for service of some kind say TCP connections that kind of thing where legitimate users are denied service they can't communicate with that particular server and then finally, the network security tool we're talking about here is a digital certificate. It's an encrypted password protected file. It's got a public key in it. It's got a private key in it and other information that helps to identify you uniquely. Hope you enjoyed this exam. Glad you took a few minutes to take it. Again, plenty of free videos, practice exams, and fully illustrated tutorials on the website and on the YouTube certification channel as well. Again, thanks for taking a few, time, few minutes to take today's exam. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you next time.